Right, what's good everybody welcome to the fourth episode of the ride with and the happy new year by the way listen today we're going back to what we love doing the most and that is reviewing cars but before we get into that though please make sure you hit the subscribe button if you haven't done so make sure you hit that like give us a comment below let us know what you think about this exciting video now if you had to ask any car enthusiast what car they dreamt of when they were growing up what car made sense to them when they were growing up I'm pretty sure the names Porsche and Ferrari will probably pop up. I certainly know that Porsche was my car growing up. I mean, I had this car everywhere. I had it on my bedroom wall. I had it, you know, I used it to cover books. I put it everywhere because I really, really wanted the car. I wanted to own it. I wanted to drive it so, so bad. Well, today, that dream comes true. Well, part of it anyway. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the 2020 Porsche 911 Turbo S. Okay, now because this car has got such rich heritage and history, we're gonna break this review into two parts. One would be for the people that are true motor enthusiasts, and the other bit will be for people that don't really care about all the technical stuff like G-force and suspensions and all the technical things that have to go with reviewing a car like this. So stick around for that, it should be quite awesome. So this then is the Porsche 911 Turbo S, and this is just about the most beautiful car I've ever seen. I mean, look at it. So I mentioned that this car has got the uh, Porsche aerodynamic kit. And I was told by Porsche South Africa that, that this is the first one in the country that was sold with this particular kit. Of course, there have been more that have been sold, but this was the very, very, very first one with this kit. Let's take a closer look at what this kit is, actually. If you go in the front over here, you can start by looking at this bit over here as part of the aerodynamic kit. And you move along to the side, get this little bit over here. And then as we come along to the side profile of the car, this little side skirt over here is also part of the kit but the real magic of this aerodynamic kit is right here at the back this is where all the glory is in this particular kit this black spoiler over here really adds a nice sort of sporty finish to the car as you're driving of course you go past certain uh, mileage this pops up it gives the car a nice aesthetic look also this big wing creates fantastic downforce as you drive the car as well so this car is fitted with 20 inch tires in the front and 21 inch tires at the back. And I'm also told that the front axle and the rear axle are different sizes. In fact, the rear axle is slightly wider than the front axle. Okay, I'm getting a bit too technical, but I had to mention that. <laughs> and of course, the car is also fitted with the Porsche's LED matrix system over here. It looks very nice. And these nice LED spot lamps over here as well. The car looks good. Now, as you would expect with a car like this, the boot space is absolutely horrible. In fact, it's 128 liters with... It's really, really awful. <laughs> but anyway, you aren't going to buy this car to put 6,000 bags in. You're not buying this car to have your whole family travel with you. In fact, if you have a small bag like this for a small trip, that's just about enough. So we've seen what this car looks like from the outside. It's time for us to have a look at the inside. Well, inside, to be honest, I'm a little bit disappointed. I expected a little bit more from a car that cost this much, but don't get me wrong. It's still a fantastic place to be in. I think everything is very easy to find. There's nothing complicated about this car. In fact, you could possibly get a more sophisticated display in a mercedes or a bmw that costs the same as this particular car but don't get me wrong everything feels good the steering wheel feels very solid this part of the air feels nice and rigid the soft materials the leather on top here everything feels well made pretty typical of a german car one thing though that i don't particularly like is the instrument cluster over here it's kind of it, it kind of faces 
in it's come almost like a u shape uh sort of like hugging you in and the only problem with that is i'm at my driving position right now and if i'm looking directly at the cluster i cannot see the last two little dials on the side the one is the temperature so i'm not really worried about that but this one over here is my fuel range that i'm worried about because that's quite important so if i'm sitting here i can't really see it but i suppose you can live with it but it's it's a bit annoying to be honest so now in terms of the infotainment system it's pretty simple really it's fully touchscreen you would expect that from a modern car um the only thing i don't like though is that you there is no manual control down here everything is everything is touchscreen i'm not sure i'm convinced by that but moving down over here you've got obviously your gears which is quite nice i quite like this little gear lever over here uh, electronic park brake and that bit over here as well which is the park brake so i quite like the simplicity of it but to be honest i expected a little bit more inside here you've got your steering wheel controls over here you can control various things like the display over here and obviously the music and the voice activation you can also control what kind of drive setting you want in this particular car by just switching the dial over here which is actually quite cool if you look at the screen it's now a normal sport sport plus an individual which you can make it to be what you want I like the fact that it's here and I don't have to fiddle around here and touch too many things. I can just change this as and when. That's quite cool. I quite like that. It's very nice. I also don't like the fact that I'm paying so much for this car and I still have to manually adjust my steering wheel and I have to manually adjust my seat. How, Porsche? No. But anyway, I suppose they'll argue and say no, they want to save weight and stuff like that. Anyway. I feel like they could have put an electric motor here. It would have been quite nice, actually. So, we've checked out the car. It's a beautiful day out here in the dirty east. I'm sitting in a Porsche 911 Turbo S. It is a Cabriolet. The only thing I haven't done is drive this car. I think it's time I did that. <laughs> Listen to that! <laughs> All right, let's do this. So as I'm driving this particular car, it doesn't feel like I'm driving a port. It doesn't feel complicated to drive. It doesn't feel difficult to manage. Like I said to you guys before in the, in the previous video, it's, it feels simple. It looks good, it feels nice, it feels comfortable. You would expect a car like this with the suspension that it has and the pedigree that it has to be uncomfortable. The suspension to be a bit hard, the suspension to be horrible, your back would be sore. But it's not. I'm currently driving the car in normal mode now and it doesn't feel less comfortable than a car to be honest. It's very nice. It's very nice. Now of course there are some other driving settings that you can choose. Like for instance, you can choose Sport, Sport Plus, and you can choose Individual, where you can really customize it according to what you feel like. I'll go into that a bit later on. Unfortunately, I can't take it onto a track, which is really what I wanted to do, but I can't take it onto a track. So what we're going to do is we're going to experience it as best we can, given the limitations that we are given by the manufacturers. This car feels, it feels calm, it feels relaxed, it feels like it doesn't really want to do anything. It's, it just feels nice. But I mean a Porsche. I'm not driving a Porsche so I can feel nice. I'm driving a Porsche so I can enjoy it. So what I'm going to do is put the car in road control and see what it do. Hang on for dear life, because yay! <laughs> that is what I'm talking about. <laughs> Even the GoPro fell. So let's talk some numbers. This car is fitted with a six cylinder 3.7 litre engine and it gives out a mind-boggling 478 kilowatts and 800 Newton meters of torque. 
But before I drove this car, the fastest car that I had driven was a BMW M850i, and that was BMW 90 kilowatts. And I thought that was quick. This, this thing is biblically quick. Why are we talking about numbers? If you are looking for a Porsche, entry level Porsche, you are look to part ways with about 1.7 million rand, and that would be a 911 Carrera. For this though, the Turbo S, you're looking to part ways with about 4.1 million rand. Ouch! Ooh. But I'll tell you what, from being behind this wheel and driving this car, it is absolutely worth it. Absolutely worth every single cent. This car is wonderful. Wonderful, 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 wonderful. It feels balanced. It feels like you're in control of everything. It feels sporty. It's sexy. It's comfortable. This is the real deal. Yes is the real deal. Now of course you can always look at other cars that are in the same sort of power bracket like for instance the Ferrari 458, you can look at the BMW M8 competition and that gives out about 460 kilometers, at 740 or 50 newton meters of torque. So it's sort of there and there and about and it's going to cost you just about 3.8 million rand. So you there and there and about. Pedal shift gearbox as well. It's so responsive. Quick. Boom. There. Boom. There. Boom. It's it's phenomenal. It really is. This car. This car makes sense. That's what I'm gonna say. It makes sense. So then, the Porsche 911 Turbo S. So what's the verdict? Well, if you have 4.1 million Rand to spend on a car, I'll tell you what, you should go ahead and get this. This is absolutely amazing. Guys, check it out. I hope you enjoyed the review. Make sure you hit that subscribe button, make sure you pass it on to your friends, and leave a comment for us. Look out for the second part of the review, a more technical part of the review. We're going to much more detail than we did. Hope you enjoyed it. We'll see you again next time. I think I'm going to go for another time. <laughs>